by Germany and Algeria. But it really is, maybe as I say, a switching of the top seed in this group. Canada, three of the last four Paralympic gold medals in the wheelchair basketball competition. They've had a much more difficult go of it in Rio as they have not been able to get a victory as yet in their opening two games. And Australia have been impressive with the two performances. They have both of them as victories to their credit. So this, the last time they met in London four years ago, it was a victory for gold for Canada. But they sit sixth in this group right now. Spain at the top with five points. Turkey equally with five. And then Australia sitting in third position. So it is the top four teams of the subsequent groups, Group A and Group B, a total of 12 teams in this competition. But it's the top four of each group that will automatically be qualified through to the quarterfinal round. And Canada really need to come out with something very impressive here. Their score lines so far, defeated by Spain by a score of 80 to 46 for Canada. And then also a much closer score line against the Netherlands as Australia are now being announced out onto the floor. Looking at number nine, Tristan Knowles, really one to be looking for. He just got announced onto the floor. He with the points per game average of 22 and a half has really been carrying the lion's share of the offense for Australia in this competition. And then their coach, that is Ben Etridge, who has been a part now as a player equally himself and then leading this team to that silver medal four years ago in London. And then equally the goal that they were able to claim in the Paralympic Games in Beijing. They are the 2014 world champions, are Australia, now Canada, now being announced out onto the floor. And a little bit of a different story for Canada. Four years ago, when they claimed that gold medal, their coach, Jerry Tonello, was the leader of the ship. And there's been a changing of the guard, and that really more by circumstance, as Tonello, unfortunately, losing his short battle with cancer and a brain tumor earlier this year in January he passed he stepped away from the Paralympic program in the men's wheelchair basketball in 2015 in May and then interim coach who now is the full-time coach Stephen Baia Lois took this team into the para Pan Am games that were in Toronto in 2015 and from there they move forward and in that particular competition the Canadian team well, they honor their coach with a medal there, but we will now break as the playing of the national anthems.
both teams introduced and now to shake hands and it's really a great part of each of the matches the sportsmanship that we've seen the Canadians are here in great support equally so are the Australians they travel well to the green and gold the very distinct green and gold it's the black on right now but the it'll take off their warm-up tops and then you'll see the white and red of Canada and we just talk about the coach for Canada Jerry Tanello the 59 year old in the passing of himself earlier in this year but they win a self silver do Canada in the pair Pan Am games in Toronto a year ago and they dedicate it to their coach but this is their lineup and gone are Patrick Anderson Joey Johnson but David Eng number 15 one to be watching for as a threat and then equally as well Tyler Miller a well a player who's capable but they haven't really got the scoring that they would have known previously Canada in this tournament so far. Nick Gonchin also with nine points average per game, but they, with the two subsequent losses in their opening matches, they're really just trying to push off against something. And there is Steve Bialoas, who was the interim coach a year ago, and with that silver medal in Toronto, he takes over the duties here. He had been a part as the assistant coach, equally with the men's and the women's programs, and then the junior program coming through. And so Paralympic Canada puts him in charge and the Australian lineup one to be looking for number nine Tristan Knowles is the most notable threat out there for Ben Etters's side but they really just have greater balance and distribution Sean Norris a great shooter as well number seven to be looking for as well for Australia there is Etteridge so has led this side to the gold that they had at Beijing the silver in London four years ago so he's got continuity and he has been with his personnel and as I mentioned trying to get a little bit younger our Canada their average age just under 30 just over 30 for Australia and there a look at the referees today it's Gustavo Matthias who is in charge as the referee and the two umpires Thomas Pagna and Adam Polchak will take the umpires role the opening lineup for Canada Hedges Lanchier Yasmin Miller and Ang and Ang really going to be the biggest threat you see him right there in the middle from the back he with the shaved head and the arms out number 15 and there Knowles number nine you also have a look there Ness is capable as a veteran of this side but Knowles and Norris both seven and nine are going to carry the load here Latham will take some of the distribution as well number five for Australia too but really the Australians favored in this one it's not necessarily how they may have liked it. They were pipped at the post four years ago in that gold medal game, and that had been the story. And the reverse was true four years prior in Beijing. But these are the results for Canada. They just haven't been able to generate enough offense so far and taking on two very formidable teams, both Spain and Netherlands. And for the Australians, a 20-point victory over the Netherlands, and Canada obviously losing to them. And then the two-point victory over Turkey. Turkey will be right in amongst it. So Australia are favored to get themselves on the podium again. They'll be looking for gold in Rio. This is a big step and a big stepping stone for them that they'll want to push off against. And there the acknowledgement coming across. That was Ang to just shake the hands of the Australian bench. They all know each other well. They've been down these roads before. Right now, it looks a little bit of a more daunting travel for Canada as Zang will make his way. They're really a great bit of respect and sportsmanship as he's done the round the house with everybody. They just concede that one, Canada, as Latham will just touch it back. And this immediately for Knowles. You wouldn't be surprised if he looks for three. Here he goes. It's up. And that's as good a roll to try to compete at least to fall down on the first touch of it. But it will, on both attempts, just spray wide of the rim. Knowles is confident enough that he'll take another one from here. There he goes. And that's the second asking of it. it is a little more rewarding as he returns that with interest. Give him three cracks at it. Three for a dollar. And they've got three points on the board. The wide side, that is so well received by the Canadian, taking that inside to Ang. Ang will go up off the glass. And that is some great work. In 
inside this opening minute. Both teams with a score. Knowles has had the lion's share of possession so far. He turns back on himself, and he's looking to be a three-point maestro. He goes off the rim and just has had three attempts at it. He's got three points, but of course he'd love nine. Canada, with this possession, can take the lead. It's going to need to be a good angled shot there, just a little bit too fearsome coming off of that back glass and Eng reaches in I think he may have picks picks up the foul just have a listen to it and it's gonna be a personal foul it's gonna be Hedges who takes it for Canada well, rather that is against the Australians so Hedges picks it up so Hard to tell sometimes just where you're going to see that foul, but just a shot now from Norris. And it's the play that goes on off the ball that really just have to keep a short leash on. From three point range, it's going to be a passing play across to Ang. Ang will just take his moment to shoot. And both teams right now just a little bit challenged to get their shooting sights going. This is a much better range for Australia and an open play. They find a way to convert. So the score coming. Tristan Knowles has got three. The other two now belong to Norris as expected. Those two leading from the front for the green and gold. So just to lay out the basic guidelines of wheelchair basketball. Every player on the floor having a classification and that numerical value is Canada that just brought it back within one. And that shot just puts it up. It's Hedges who will take that one. But each player having a numerical value in proportion it's a sign to their level of function. So the players with the higher level of function have a higher numerical value and the players with the lower level of function with the lower level. And so a 1.0 is the lowest level all the way up to 4.5 and there's a couple now three pointers. He's starting to throw the rainbows up is Tristan Knowles and that'll just give now a four point spread for the land down under and they're putting the Maple Leafs under pressure early in this one. Eng from the outside, he just distributes it. Canada moving it well enough. It has been their shooting accuracy so far. So a total of 14 points to get back to it. They would have had a chance there for a resetting of the 14 second shot clock, but they don't get the rebound and Australia does. So across the five players, you cannot exceed the total value cumulatively of 14. There you see how often they will go down. So it's all about the impairment in the lower limbs. You'll see some of the players with amputation, equally some with just the inability to use their legs for whichever reason, whether it's muscular or whichever the impairment may have. Some born, equally some acquired. This will be Knowles from three-point range. He's going to go for three right now. They better slow him down. He's got himself a hot shooting hand that he strokes nine points already for Australia. And this is a, a threat of danger for Canada. They cannot allow Tristan Knowles to shoot out the lights from range. This will be thrown up by Ang, and it will come up at least half a foot short. It hits the front of the rim, but he needed a little more distance to get it inside that bucket. Another attempt here. That looked almost on the mark, but close only counts in slow dancing. It won't count as you put it up on the rim. It has to go down, as we all know. And this is a Australian side that will just take their moments. And Tristan Knowles looked to have massaged the entirety of the rim there and was going to get it to drop, but he comes up short. That looked to be maybe an infringement. Ang inside, and Ang is getting batted around. That was
was almost like a ping pong ball, the way it was being swatted at, or like a butterfly that just gets away. The Canadians now with the substitutions. And a chance to have a little bit of a different look for this Canadian lineup. Vermette comes in, Yasmin, Hickey, Juan, and Gonchin. So this, a distribution of balance that they need. And I think the Canadians know that they're gonna be up against it. They're gonna just run short of time. And that's not necessarily to slight their performance so far, but really the facts of the scoreline in the competition that they have been able to generate so far, it's an indication that they are going through a transition as a program. Knowles from the outside. The rebound taken, and strength going up to take that one down. Donchin with that. He's a 4.5 classified player. He's still going. And then number four, he's now got a couple Aussie mosquitoes on him, though. And he just can't make that work for himself, as that will just knuckle wide of the inside of that rim. And Knowles, I think he's going to pick up the foul. He's got a hand on there. He just touches the elbow. And it is just that little bit of a touch. And he's suggesting, well, it might have been more from a brisk wind that came into the Olympic arena than what I was doing to him. But it will be a shot from the line nonetheless for Canada. off the front of the rim. This for Knowles. He'll take it. And a fast break. All of a sudden, there's room. He's going to put it inside, and it's up. Maybe just getting underneath the basket a little too tight to have the angle they needed Australia to get that to carry him in. And there's the contact from the Canadian defender. Just, just getting underneath the wheels of the Australian coming now to the line. This is Sean Norris. The one-two punch of Norris and Knowles. You know, both teams pretty active so far. Via Lois rotating through his lineup, trying to utilize his full personnel. And that's a really nice stroke from the free line there. Just well placed. And it's just a beautiful snap as you watch the mesh just sort of kick up it's like dropping a pebble in the pond just beautiful again as it's in the basket and it's on the board Norris and Knowles right now taking Australia forward in this one and you would really wouldn't bet against them increasing it to a double point advantage but a pass inside and the hoop and the harm and that's what Canada needed and the long extension from Nick Donchin, 24 years of age. And he has that height. You see the different wheelchairs. And it really comes down to the height of the athletes. If they have an amputation on one or both of their legs, well, they can choose the height that they would like, maybe for their chair where the seat level will be at. But if their legs equally, they need to obviously allow for those and making sure that the height of their seat, because of simply the height of their body, is going to be higher than other athletes. And remembering as well that the limbs provide a counterweight, a counterbalance that helps them retain their, their balance and equally the angle at which the wheels come down from their chair will give them a wider tripod type of positioning. So every player, depending on their physical characteristics and equally their impairment. But now Canada find a little bit of a stroke here. And that goes high up, and that's such an impressive shot to use the full height of the backboard to get the angle and also the speed of it arriving. So the deflection comes down at the right distance. And too easy inside for Australia as Bradley Ness, the captain, the 41 years young player. You'll see players into their 40s. 
I haven't seen anybody in their 50s yet, but I wouldn't count that out. There are a few that have been around and love this game. And if you could play in your 50s, why wouldn't you? If you can play at top level where you have been able to for so long, but you'll see that the youth movement is on, though, for Canada. As best they can, there really is a blend. If you could get a third of your personnel at 35 and over, and between 25 and 35, another third of your team, four players, and then equally another four players under 25, that would be the optimum balance that any program would like to retain. But it doesn't always work out like that. You've got to take the best players that are going to do the best job to represent your nation. It'll be picked up by Australia, and here they come on the break again. So three three-pointers are ready from Tristan Knowles. And he is the Stephen Curry of wheelchair basketball. And Stephen Curry, of course, well known with the Golden State Warriors in the National Basketball Association. And that's a little bit of an awkward one. Ness there has just brought about some traffic. He upends the Canadian, and this is starting to get a little bit hot. That's the first time I've seen something that was a little bit offside as Ness just comes in and rocks his man. And I like physical contact just as much as the next guy. But that we have not seen as Ness is just taking a moment to express his feelings about maybe where Australia has sat in relation to Canada over the last number of Paralympic cycles. But this will be a free throw from the line now. And this, for Canada, they could really maybe push off from here as Gonshin is getting it. This is the discussion going on now with Etridge, just from the referee. And there's some curiosity here just about the call. And Etridge knows, regardless of what the scoreline is reflecting right now, this match has a sub-level to it as well, as Tristan Knowles has been great so far. Shooting out the lights for Australia. And we'll just have a look across his tally. So the nine points, three from seven from range. As he's had a couple from two-point range, but it's three from five, shooting 60%. And I think they're reviewing this play from Ness. And Ness might be in some hot water here because that was simply unnecessary. So we'll wait to see just how this is going to play out. Etridge has got his ideas about it. So let's just watch and wait and see. So the foul is drawn by Vermette. Vermette is the one that gets popped there by Bradley Ness. And there's no doubt that that's what Ness intended to do. He was a little bit like a runaway train on a one-way track. Except there was already a player on that track. It was Vermette. And he was in the dark as to what was coming. He'll go to the line. He's got himself sorted now. These guys are made of pretty stern stuff. They have faced enough challenges en route. And this one, an opportunity for Burnett from the line. And that, well, it says it all, doesn't it? Actions speak louder than any word. And that is going to be the first. And that's going to come up short. So just the two shots, and it'll be the inbound as well for Canada. They'll make a substitution. Eng coming back in. He's got the Superman tattoo on his left shoulder there. He's certainly in great condition. So he comes in. Hickey goes out. And Canada bringing it within seven. Gonchin has really been holding it together through the spine of this offense and up and down at both ends of the floor for the Maple Leafs. He's got himself in a good position there. And the hoop and the harm, I think he's going to go. He's going to go for a three-point play here. And Canada have just somehow struck a balance in this match. Well, the Australians who come out in any side in this tournament that is able to send in the long-range bombers of three-pointers that we saw from Tristan Knowles, that he misses the free throw after the basket. But anybody's going to take a 
good head start. And you're going to get that type of shooting. This for Norris. And Norris will just go off the back of the rim. And where will the foul come from? I think it's coming against Canada. And it will go to Canada's... I think Vermette's going to pick that one up. So the personal fouls. Hedges has got one. Lancia has got one. And it's Vermette that picks up that personal foul. So we're now two minutes remaining in this first quarter. It's been an interesting one. <laughs> it's had a little bit of distinction to it, without a doubt. Ness has got a boomerang on that one. As it comes right back to him in his position. And you almost sense that that was going to go down. Australia have shown that possibility and that danger for Canada. That's definitely in their arsenal. As Gonshin, he needs to maybe find a passing option. He's got Ang. Ang right now is going to have to just muscle his way away from it. And then it's just batted away. Almost like a volleyball serve by their veteran captain, Bradley Ness. And then they do recover it. Simmons will have the inbounds. So Simmons invites Gonshin and just a little bit untidy with that effort. So a whole sale change of players for Australia. As in comes a whole new crop. Blair Simmons, Stibners, and Latham on the floor. It's going to be Simmons, though. Still, he's looking for his first points of the match. So Simmons, Stibners, it's Blair, it's Knowles, and Latham out for Australia. As they really look to change up. Gonshin, Juan, Vermette, Miller, and Eng for Canada on the floor right now. So the last minute and a half, two minutes, is not a whole lot of scoring on the board and some curiosity as to the flavor of this match. Neither of these teams give the other any quarter. It is... I'm not going to say it's prison rules, but they play for keeps for sure. Everybody does, but this one, this has got history to it. The shot from Simmons, and he's been able to strike a balance there. As he goes two for two from the line, gets his first couple points. And uh, now a seven-point advantage. Canada have not really shown a three-point offering yet. They're trying to get it inside. And every time that it is being brought inside by Eng, he basically has got an Australian uniform on as he's being smothered by them. He's going to have a couple shots here. And he works the rim at the front and also the backboard. And gets the encouragement from his team as well. Oh, and that is a sweet stroke there. It's string music for David Eng. He is being relied upon heavily. He's the captain as well. 39 years of age and a classified player of 4.5. So it's within five again. So this, a winding route through the first quarter. It feels as though we've almost moved through towards the end of the first half, but we're just coming up to the remaining minute. And there is Knowles again. And Canada do need to keep an eye on him. And he'll find his own space. He was behind a pick there and just was able to make the most of his shot. And nothing more intimidating than great shooting accuracy. You just can ill afford making mistakes. How would this give and go from the Canadians? And the follow through is not as precise. That really was a great overlap. And then an underlay pass coming in. A defensive rebound for Knowles. And if you give him some room, he's going to stop and pop. There he's ready for another one. He'll just, again, find a way just past the open bucket. And Eng 
you expect that he's going to try and take this one on. The feed to Gonshin. He's going to have to hold the pass to the outside. A better position there, and oh, that's well taken. That is the Canadian number seven, Juan, who just puts that one up, and that's his first couple points of the match. So it's still within five, and what looked to be an Australian, well, shall we say, a speedy start, particularly with Knowles and what he was able to do from three-point range. It's back within check, and this match is just starting to heat up after the first quarter of play. It's Australia 21, Canada with 16. As you see for Australia, that is the product of Tristan Knowles, but the overall two-pointers and the total field goal percentage stronger for Canada. The rebounds defensively, not a whole lot of difference in it. So this is all entirely in the balance between these two Commonwealth nations. They're giving as good as they've got. Underway in the second quarter, it's Canada with the possession arrow. It was Latham that took that opening tip, and then the Canadians just conceding. They really need to take advantage of that coming in and driving to the basket. That was uncontested, and they let it slip. That was Hedges, the captain, the co-captain, with David Eng. And Tristan Knowles, again, right into a soft pocket, and he'll go right off the glass, and he'll kiss it down for another couple points. And Eng, he will get himself rolling. He's been a little bit, well, controlled so far. And rather, those points going to Gonshin, but they've got a little bit of a combination of two of those. Eng and Gonshin working back and forth. So six points for Eng, five for Gonshin. And then really, twos across the board but Tristan Knowles he really has the weight of this Australian offense on his shoulder just catching up with his tally so far he's got 13 points and that one will just be defended well enough to keep it out of play and now for Australia for the inbound The good pass inside. Is they're gonna they're gonna count it? I think the contact already happened before the shot attempt, and that does get ruled out. Latham has three Canadians right on top of him here. And there you see him going down, and a little bit of a roll as well. David Eng with the feed to the top of the key. They need to create a little bit more movement. Gonshin with this shot here. It goes up and off 
Racing forward is Simmons. Simmons is going to lose his balance. He'll have to get himself back into a position. He's struggling there. He's getting some help now from his teammate. And the referee just acknowledging the challenge there. Blows the whistle. And 13 points as we see for Knowles. He's speeding away right now and putting on a real shooting clinic. Inside, just fading away from the basket here. And Simmons, with an offensive rebound, puts it back out to Knowles. And this is really impressive from Australia. And they have a couple good looks at it. They use the outside and the inside game. And then the shot from a distance just can't fall. And Gonshin has the attentions immediately from Tristan Knowles coming across and swiping into him with his chair there. And that's the foul that has been indicated. And Warren Chuck is now out onto the floor. His first bit of play, he's the 20-year-old. He's a 4.5 classified player too. And just as you see it, the Canadians have struck again. And a three-pointer. And what a beauty it is. It's Gonshin has shown you just how much he has in his arsenal. He's got range from outside and inside. And that is a tremendous threat. He's now on eight points. So he leads the Canadian side. This is a much tighter game than maybe the opening results for Canada may have suggested in this tournament. A foul comes in. Will they allow it to be taken as in the course of shooting? So Knowles already saddled up and on the line. And the query coming from Hedges. He's the co-captain with Eng. This game going back and forth and get a real sense that momentum could swing either way if either of them could really get on a good run, but they seem to be keep pegging each other back. And then that first three-pointer you see from Canada. It's got this match within two. comments coming from the Canadian coach that's Stephen Bailo is just talking about listen don't you worry about having conversations with the referees that'll be my duty of responsibility just focus on what you can take care of they've got themselves in a good position it looked as though they were letting it slip and that's as good a Dr. Clouseau mustache as I have seen in a while that's a Raleigh Fingers special he, a famous baseball pitcher with the Oakland Athletics. Even Dennis Eckersley sported one of those. But this is a moment really for Canada to try and take a turn of momentum. Tristan Oles missing that first shot. And he'll, he'll find the second one. It's Jasmine with the signature facial hair there for the Canadians. It's distinct enough to warrant comment. And a shot, is it before they've been able to release it, though? Gonshin has really started to spread his wings. So far in the tournament, he's nine points is what he's been able to deliver. So he and David Egg have been able to bring the most, but Nine is not enough to win at this level of competition. He's putting on a strong display in this one. Seven minutes still to go in the half, and he's already at eight points. And what I mean is if the top scorer on your side is only generating nine points average in their output, that will not help your side be victorious. The good sides 
they're into the 20 points. Their top scorers are definitely in their teens if it's distributed across four players. McShane will now come in for Australia. So a repeat of the gold medal match from four years ago. And although it looked as though the Canadians were going to be second fiddle in this one for definite, it's not playing out like that at the moment. Gotchin with this ball. He's shown us a three-point look and also a conversion. That's an ambitious pass and not as well read it by Hedges and waiting for it as he was just turning and then facing his back. Formidable stature. Number 15, the captain, the co-captain for this Australian side. And also more senior in years too. So he knows how to play the game. And a little bit of physicality. Well, it never hurt anybody. It certainly lets the other team know your urgency and intensity as well. He'll take a score to the inside. He gets that pass and Ness puts it up. So that's equally just providing the substance required from his leadership. He'll put a few points on the board and equally not always about the amount that you're scoring, just at the right times, too, are key. As teams will go through moments of greater confidence than other times where they're struggling, trying to find their form in the course of shooting. And they're going to count that as an offensive foul. And Jasmine gets the foul, number 11 on that play. So he's just off the play, trying to pick and create an opening for his teammate to come down the lane, and that's what the referees assessed on that call. Canada looking to replenish with the four different players now coming in, set on the sidelines in front of their bench. Well, that's a pretty big wholesale change. Gonshin will take the rebound. He's gonna go here. He's got some extra space. He's gonna have to take it on by himself. And he holds and controls almost surfing, isn't it? As you're trying to corner under a great amount of speed. And your best way to really maintain that balance is to throw your arms up in a way almost creating a sail. And it's just that extra bit of, of structure as you see. There's the Canadian that was going into Moranchuk and he went down. So there are the four new players coming in. And what is going on here? Saw the Australian taking an almighty tumble. So some of the extracurricular going on between these sides right now is, is interesting. It's certainly giving a flavor of just how much it means to them. This match, they know where it sits in the entire aspect of this tournament too. Knowles is needing a pit stop as he gets uh, some new hardware there, a new wheel in preparation for an adjustment. Pretty simple, isn't it? As he's able just to position that on as quickly. And he's ready to roll. I suspect he gets a few miles on those wheels over the course of a match. Some new tread. The Aussie down. He gets the help from a friend. The front end loader picks him up and back and in the course of play. Vermette. Well, rather, that's the Canadians, number 13. It is McShane. Tristan Knowles from downtown Rio de Janeiro. But it won't fall. And the Olympic Park out in Tijuca, a newly constructed area of Rio. The majority of it is the fabulous venues that you have been seeing and the International Broadcasting Center as well. A few hotels in this region, but 
it really is a newly developed area of Rio, right on an internal lagoon. So just about a, a mile or so inland from the Atlantic Ocean is where this particular arena is located. It's going to be Ang, though. He'll take these free throw shots from the line. That's an important one. It's back as it's been as much as five. Five really has been the barometer and the measuring stick that has been able to be maintained by Australia. He takes a bite out of that with that shot. And he's taken a, a further nibble. It's down to three now. Quick movement from Norris into Ness. Ness with that height advantage is able just to poise the shot up. He's strong. It's just getting away. And it's fallen into the Australian clutches again. That looked to be on line. It's going to be David Eng. We've seen one three-pointer from range for Gonshin. Eng hasn't taken one. He will now. That's going to come short, though. And it goes right in the hands of Norris. So that's rather a quick look. And then a foul against Australia. Some of that going on. And you'd say, well, depending on which sport you're watching, called sledging, where you're just taking players out off the play and it's one of those accidentally on purpose plays but this is a game that it has every chance of getting edgy and maybe beyond it's number 14 for canada and that is tyler miller he's a 1.5 classified player a 32 year old and from here where we're awaiting the direction from the referees basketball just got away from him. There's more than just the one, but this is what's happening. Some of this disjointed play where teams are getting distracted with the physicality and some of the intimidation that comes with it as well. It brings about just these moments of uncertainty. David Eng, he does the 360 loop. That's as good a spinorama as you're going to see. It's out to Eng. That's going to be a tough one. It just goes beyond the rim, and Eng's just come up a little bit short in his last couple attempts. And now the Mexican wave starts to kick its way around this Rio Olympic arena. The energy and the buzz and the crowds for the Paralympic Games, and particular, particularly the wheelchair basketball, has been as good as the Olympic Games. In fact, I'd hazard a guess even better in some stages of it. The Brazilians are coming out in waves. And there, appropriately, as it whips around the Rio Olympic Arena. Capacity crowds in Carioca one, the other wheelchair basketball venue. This, the biggest in the park and the biggest in Rio indoor facilities. 16,000 seats. And we are north of 10,000 for sure in here. The turn from Eng to the high key area beyond the three-point range. They've had a little bit of a better look from Liam Hickey. Number eight, he's handling the ball well for Canada right now. Eng looking to drive around the end, and the end around just never gets around to getting to him. And that's a big hit. They've done it again, and Eng goes down in a heap. And he's going to try and get himself sorted. He's going to come right out of his chair. And he sees that as a better way of getting back upright. And so all players with a lower limb impairment in this particular sport, obviously some are able to walk with their prosthetic limbs, not always in a wheelchair. There you see in the background, Ang basically doing a Superman, flying right through the air and fully horizontal and almost the wheelchair coming with them as he was spraying through the air. So there will be players that do that. It's interesting watching the coach for the Dutch women. He has his amputations, and on the end of them, he has shoes on the end of his amputations. He'll walk up and down that sideline. Also likes to sit. We've seen a few coaches at the athlete's height level like to sit on their backsides rather than sitting in a chair. And it becomes a real personal 
connection that they have with their their team. It's almost as if it's just sitting down and it's a casual exchange. But this, however, this game, this got some bite to it. Australia have gone to the capable hands of Norris continuously inside the hand coming up from the Canadian defender. That was Liam Hickey. He's 18 years of age. What would you rather be doing as a teenager competing at the Paralympic Games or in college, wherever he might be, maybe in work at this stage? But here you are on the biggest stage for your sport and enjoying it. But it's Milatham who drops it from the outside. As he got two, he does. It's a double play of free throws. So the scoreline starting to increase now for Australia. It's eight points clear. As we're getting to the latter third of this first half now, the second quarter rather, as the two minute on the clock coming, and that's generally an indication of just a call to arms, wanting to manage your possessions and equally control momentum going into halftime. Norris, he's the go-to man. He'll control the ball as well as anybody on the floor. Ang will take it though. He goes too strong off the glass, and Ang is awaiting for it. And you see him almost with so much extension. He comes off the floor. And the famous athlete for Canada no longer playing in wheelchair basketball, Patrick Anderson, highly regarded as probably the best in the sport. He no longer, he was a part of the gold medal in London four years ago, but he made famous the move of actually elevating off the floor with the wheelchair and extending, trying to get rebounds. And that is not an easy thing to achieve. It will go and it will be controlled by Canada. Hickey comes up with it. Canada, their shooting touch has kind of failed them a little bit in the stages here right now. And Ang will take it and score. That really was great in motion and trying to hold his line. He extends with his follow through. He gets the harm from the wheelchair just trying to block him out. And that was McShane doing his best to force him on the outside line. And from Eng, from there, to follow through and to get the swish. That's a golden moment. Now he'll really just visualize this one, Will Eng. He's just looked down, he's gone through the motion of preparation for the shot. This brings it back within five. He's unable to do it, though. It goes off the rim, and he's come up a little bit short. Inside, in the course of shooting, Latham can't take that first opportunity and convert it. Inside this last minute now, this is where it has been in and around this half a dozen point lead. And this to extend, it's been as much as eight, it's been around five. Canada have never led though in this match so far. It was a 21 to 16 scoreline after the first quarter. And Australia are just leading by the one point if you just look at the second quarter on its own. But they have a six point advantage overall as you can see. And they elect to utilize the timeout. Find the gaps, all right? Find the gaps. Oh, you go down, you go down. 
So you hear the comments don't all arrive at once find the gaps and equally getting a hand up on Gonshin who has really been the most comfortable shooter for Canada so far. Just looking at his numbers. He's got the eight points. He's shooting 60 percent. It's a better shooting percentage than what they've seen out of David Eng so far. He shoots at 30. So Gonshin they're expecting is going to come back off of these free throws and be the most likely shooter for Canada. But from the line, that's an important basket for Australia as Latham gets his third point. Takes it to seven, and it'll be challenging to get the double-digit lead for Australia before the end of this half, but you need to just take care of these bonus points. They tally up, and they do make a difference. They just keep turning the screw against the opposition and always applying the pressure. Latham just waiting for the ball. And that's a little bit kind of like the suggestion that, yep, dinner's ready, but oh, just hold on a second. Any player wants that ball at the free throw line. And they have only given the one shot. So there, a change of speed. And this needs to be clarified, I think, between the officials is the sounding from the timekeeper's bench. So what is happening? They're saying two shots. They allowed one. By law standing by, Etrich equally as curious as to what's going to come out of this discussion. So two shots, it goes back now. And you see the official equally as curious and just sort of resigned. That's the call. Not sure how it could have changed, but nonetheless, Latham. Takes the shot. Oh, does he work the rim there? And now it's an eight-point spread. He gets both of them from the line. That's his fourth point of the game so far. Gonshin could come around the end here. Tristan Knowles is going to make him have to pull up on himself to the outside. And this, the long play. Gonshin again, as they knew, was most likely going to be the threat. He's going to have to be impressive. The shot clock is, though, slipping away. And this, they're going to have to work quickly, Canada. Oh, they'll find it. And a strike that just keeps them within touching distance. And it's now within six, and that's where it has been. But it looked really as though they were running out of time. And Liam Hickey just drops in a bucket. Inside, coming over the back. And they're going to count it. The hoop and the harm. So inside to Norris. But Hickey, those were his first two points of the match. He's only had two attempts at it to get that score as he's fading away. And then equally, just waiting to see, are they going to put it on the board? So the shot. And the credit there now being awarded to Norris. He'll wait for the bonus point. Looking good so far from the free throw line. He's three from three. He drops it. So 9.3 seconds. A ways to travel to get to a good shot. And the aggressive defense from Australia, that makes it difficult. Just electing to let that ball come forward because the clock only starts when they have it in their retention. Down low, Gonshin, and is there a reaching in? And are they going to count this one? Now that rotating and coming around the corner. So we're getting late in this. It's Gonshin who draws the foul. He's going to take the shot. So we're at a point where we've exceeded the foul threshold. And they will, in fact, get the chance now to go to the line. Even though that was a quick whistle, he was just trying to come around the end. He takes the first one. Those are crucial points for both sides just to keep the scoreboard moving forward positively. He's in good position again. 
then he won't get both of them. Latham with the important defensive rebound, and Australia will just retain possession. No long lunges late at the end of 20 minutes of play. And this is proving maybe a tighter matchup than possibly expected. Really just looking at the results so far. Leading into it, you thought that maybe the Canadians were going to be left for dust. And Australia have already made their way to the changing room for halftime. They have 15 minutes and the clock already started. And Canada just assembling themselves and gathering their thoughts. Just preparing to get themselves. And they'll go as a group across when they're all ready. So gold medal world champions are Australia from 2014. They lead the gold medal Paralympic champions from 2012 in London. It's 36-28. Australia over Canada at halftime in the men's wheelchair basketball. This is Group A action in the preliminary round. And the statistics so far, the shooting a little bit better from Canada from two-point range. It's those three-pointers that have been really momentum building for Australia. They were in the first quarter, but they've been able to, from the free throw line, be dynamite, 11-12. And then the defensive rebounds as well. They've had 20 of them. The points from turnover haven't really been a story in this match as yet. So you see it 